Welcome back. This will be the final video of section 5.2 on the invertible matrix. So a couple of examples of solving uh, or isolating matrices using the properties of the inverse. So in the first example, solve for the matrix X in the following equation. Uh, matrix on the right, we can give it a name if you like. We'll call it matrix A. And that will allow us to work with letters before we put in the numbers. So as we did in previous examples, the first step is always isolate, isolate matrix X in this case. And so to do that, I'm going to start with I plus 2X inverse. Oops, try it again. Here we are, 2X inverse. And on the other side, we have the matrix A. You notice I left a little bit of space. And the reason for that is because, well, the first step in isolating here is going to be to take the inverse on both sides. Okay, you can put a bracket around the A, even though we don't really need one. Um, why am I doing that? Well, because I'm going to be using a property here, which remember the first property we saw was that the inverse of the inverse uh, yields the original matrix. And so that's what we're going to be doing here, right? So in the next step, uh, I'm going to have that all of this is equal to I plus 2X, the inverses have cancelled out, uh, equals A inverse. Okay, and so this was by property one that we saw on the previous video, property one. And that allows me to isolate X. So I'm going to complete that by doing 2X equals A inverse minus I. And finally, just by using properties, I have X equals one half of A inverse minus I. So I've completed the step of isolating X. And of course, now we can stop for a second and notice that we need A inverse. And so let's do that. Let's find A inverse. We can do this over here on the side. So I'll say finding A inverse. Okay, we're assuming that it's invertible, but if it's not, we're going to soon find out. Uh, so finding A inverse, well, uh, we know the formula for the inverse. It's A inverse equals 1 over AD minus BC times D minus B minus CA. So let's apply that formula. So 1 over minus 1 times 5 is negative 5 minus 2 times 4, so minus 8. And inside the matrix, we have 5 minus 2 minus 4 and negative 1. And that will give us minus 1 over 13 times the matrix 5 minus 2 minus 4 minus 1. And finally, if we complete the multiplication, we'll have minus 5 over 13, 2 over 13, 4 over 13, and 1 over 13. That's the matrix A inverse. So we're ready to put that back into our expression. And so we have X equals 1 half times the matrix A inverse, so minus 5 over 13, 2 over 13, 4 over 13, 1 over 13. And that matrix, all of this minus the matrix I, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. So that's our next step, which will yield 1 half. So let's do the subtraction. Minus 5 over 13 minus 13 over 13 is 18. And 2 over 13, 4 minus 0, so 4 over 13. And finally, 1 over 13 minus 13, so minus 12 over 13. And you can finally here, I'll write the final answer over here in the form of x equals, and we can multiply in the 1 half to obtain the matrix minus 9 over 13, 1 over 13, 2 over 13, and negative uh, 6 over 13. I think we forgot a minus somewhere eh, here. Plus, 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 these are all fine. Uh, what did I do? Oh, this is fine. Perfect. And that's our final answer. So that's solving equation A. We can move on to, to B. Assuming all matrices are invertible, isolate the matrix D. So here, uh, it'll be important to show all the steps. And the way we'll do that is the following. Uh, so let me start with rewriting the expression on the left. So A, B, C transpose, D, which is the matrix I want to isolate. Let me highlight that in red. And then I'll have B, A transpose, C. 
I'm going to leave a little bit of room. Actually, let me not write the right-hand side just yet, because I want to look at what I need to do on the left in order to isolate D. Right? That's, what, that's what's going to tell us what our next step is. So if you look at the expression on the left, we have to isolate D. But all we can do to this large matrix, right? This is a matrix multiplication, but think of it as one big matrix. Well, you can multiply by something on the left, and you can multiply by something on the right. right? Th those are the only things you're, we're going to do here to isolate D. And so you notice that on the left, if I want to get rid of this A, I'm going to multiply by A inverse. And on the right-hand side, if I want to get rid of the C, I'll multiply by C inverse, right? And that's what I meant by seeing uh, what the next step is. And so on the other side, I need to do the same thing, right? I'm going to have A inverse first. Then I'll have the matrix A, B transpose, which is what was already there. And then I'll conclude with multiplying on the right by C inverse. Okay, so whatever we do on the left, we need to do on the right-hand side. Now, the reason for that is because A inverse times A will be I and C times C inverse will also be I. So that will allow us to get rid of or simplify some matrices on the left and also on the right in this case. Okay, so we're ready to write our next line, which will be simply B, C transpose times D, B and A transpose. Right? Everything else got cancelled out. And so here again, uh, before I write the right-hand side, let's see what we need to multiply. So on the left, I'll have D inverse. And remember, we're assuming that all of these matrices are invertible. And on the right-hand side, remember one of the properties told us that A transpose is invertible, and its inverse is A inverse transposed. Remember, that was one of the properties. And so that's what we're going to do there. And of course, same thing on the other side. So I have a B inverse, followed by what's left of this top expression, which was B transpose C inverse, right? Because those were still there. And then in closing, the same matrix that I put on the left, or rather on the right-hand side, but on the left of the equation, I need to put that over here as well, okay? And so just like before, B inverse and B cancel out, and A transpose and A inverse transpose give us I. That's what I mean by canceling out. Now, careful, on the right-hand side, this is B inverse times B transpose. That does not simplify, right? There's nothing we can do with that. Same thing with all the other factors in the expression, so they're going to stay, right? So our next expression, our next line, um, let me do this. So our next line will be C transpose. I still have the D, that is where I'm trying to get at, and B. And so again, just like in the previous steps, I can multiply on the left and on the right. So on the left, it'll be C inverse transpose, as that's the inverse of C transpose. And on the right-hand side, B inverse, right? So whatever I did on the left of this equal sign, I need to do on the right-hand side. So C inverse transpose times all of this expression that was already there. So that was B inverse, B transpose, C inverse, A inverse transpose. And finally, B inverse, which is what I did on the left-hand side, right? And so again, these cancel out, so do these. On the right-hand side, we can check, but you notice that there's nothing we can cancel out. We can't, remember, we can't move matrices around. Uh, matrix multiplication is not commutative. And so that's as far as we can get. And so here I'm going to write that our matrix D is equal to that entire expression, which is C inverse, transpose, B inverse, B transpose, C inverse, A inverse, transpose, times B inverse. And that's it. There's nothing more we can do to the right-hand side to simplify and we've isolated D by assuming that all the matrices were invertible. Okay, so what's important in this type of exercise is to show all your steps. You can, however, work on the left and on the right at the same time, right? Because, uh, well, left multiplication and right multiplication, you can think of those as two different operations. And whatever you do to the left-hand side of the equation, or the equal sign, you must do to the other side. And that's the end of this video.